Hi. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my friends, depending on from which part of the world you are joining us from. So it's a proud privilege for me, Dr. Vijay Agarwal, to really open this 27th webinar of Kaho and Isqua webinar, which is on uh, sustainability and green hospitals today. And I must say that uh, my heart fills with pride for uh, we have more than people from more than 20 countries who normally participate in these webinars on every first Tuesday of the month. And now we have started our monthly quality meeting linking to this webinar. And I am extremely happy to say that many, many hospitals in, in the country are today also, they have joined in spite of this being a very, very auspicious uh, holiday, holiday of holy, and uh, still I am seeing so many people, and uh, I think we'd like to just name at least uh, some hospitals, Prakash, if you can tell me. So the hospitals which are already conducting this is the Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore, uh, the Mehta Hospital in Chennai, Minakshi Hospital, Tanjore, Fortis Hospital, Mohali, Punjab, Rajagiri Hospital, Alua, Kerala, Nirmalai Hospital in Chennai, Vijaya Medical and Education Institute, Chennai, AJ Hospital, Mangalore, AIG Hospital, Hyderabad, Kaveri Hospital, Salem, Jabalpur Hospital in Madhya Pradesh, Sri Ranga Hospital, Chengalpatu, Portis Hospital, Vadapalani, RMD Specialties, Kanchipuram, Caritas Hospital, Kottayam, Kerala, NHS Hospital, Jalandhar. So, and Many more, I'm sure that if I'm missing out some names of the hospitals, please do forgive me. But uh, I think we are in a way writing the history where we are trying to take the message of patient safety and quality to every nook and corner of this country and also to reach out to the various other departments in the hospital, not merely the quality department. And the topic today is an extremely, I would say topical, where this whole issue of climate change and the way things are impacting the whole world and healthcare is not going to be left aside. So to discuss this very important topic today, we have our international expert of Dr. Hans. And to do that, the moderate this session today from Kirti D'Souza. Kirti is a very, very well-known name to the people, at least in Kaho because she is the technical advisor for the Kaho Fire Audit uh, Program, as well as she is the uh, co-chair of Kaho Student Research Monitoring Program. But besides that, she is a highly accomplished, I will say, activist in the field of sustainability. She is the UN Hero Certificate Awardee for the World Environment Day event celebration of 2019. She is the assessor for the Center of Excellence for Sustainable Development of ITC. She is the Director of Seeds of Sustainability. Uh, she is the Executive Chair for Sustainability and Community Initiatives, Global Society for HSC Professionals. She is a consultant, auditor, trainer on sustainability, CSR, biodiversity, expert on IMS integration with a sustainability perspective, and there are huge, huge other things I can go on about her, but I don't think that will leave you time for the webinar. So over to you, Kirti. It's really my proud privilege to hand you over this to introduce our esteemed speaker from ISQA. So over. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much. I'm ve very much humbled by the introduction that you have given. I should say you are one of my inspirers for this journey of sustainability in healthcare. I remember the discussions that we have had, long, long discussions, almost from years to years now. And that has really helped me shape my thought process in sustainability for healthcare. So today is a very important day, I should say. And I take privilege to invite a warm welcome to Dr. Hans C. Osibar. He is one of the, I should say in, in recent times, one of the experts with deep passion for sustainability. I've been looking at the number of research publications that he has been doing, 
deeply engraved with the thought process of greening the hospitals. So it, it's a great moment for all of us to have you, Dr. Hans, and I take this pleasure to introduce you. So Dr. Hans is an advisor on sustainable healthcare innovation at the Dutch National Healthcare Institute, an independent government body. He seeks to integrate sustainability. The reduction of the ecological footprint of healthcare is his focus in its mission and the operation. So before he was a secretary to the National Commission on E-Health Implementation, and currently he is committed to Zorg, Wur Innoverin, which is the sign post for care innovations or innovators in Netherlands. He is affiliated with the Athena Institute and the Amsterdam Institute, where he lectures on transitions to green healthcare. Recently, he was associated with the Dutch Social and Economic Council to evaluate the tenability of healthcare system. He lectures and publishes on planetary health, green care, sustainability, green HTA, solidarity, medicine spillage, and related subjects. I've seen n number of publications. I would really like to devote more time of his to listen from him about his deep experience in research on the field. And, and this is the moment all of us have been waiting for. Over to you, Dr. Hans, and a hearty mm -hmm. welcome once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Katie Souza. Thank you very much, Dr. Fijan Agawal. Hello, everybody, good evening. I admire your dedication to quality in healthcare. And actually my view of a sustainable healthcare that is a healthcare with a small ecological footprint is also a quality improvement trajectory. Green care is better care. Okay, I have a presentation. I'm afraid it's a bit too long, but I will shorten the introduction, which is about planetary health. Many of my lectures, I start with the, the simple sentence, our health depends on the health of the planet. And it's an old shamanistic wisdom. All the gurus of India in former times knew that, but now today, of course, it's, um, uh, it's an observation for which a lot of scientific evidence is existing and is increasing. Okay, I will share my screen with you, I hope. Okay, so the first part will be about uh, planetary health, which I will do rather quickly. You can see it back in the PDF I will send to the organization. And the second part is about practices of green care, mostly in my country. It's not the case that the Netherlands is especially very advanced in sustainable healthcare, in green healthcare. But this is what I was asked to do by Dr. Carsten Engel from ISQA. I thank him and I thank you, Caro, very much for the invitation. I'm very honored to do so. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I work at the National Healthcare Institute, which is a, in, uh, an independent government body. We advise the Ministry of Health with regard to the basic healthcare package. And I'm working actually on a green guerrilla there to do to have a green transition from within, which is a really a hard job. I won't talk about too much about this because it's not a healthcare institute, it's a government institute, a healthcare policy. We are trying to take taking care of good healthcare is our, our motto. I also am affiliated with Amsterdam uh, University Medical Centers, the Department of Medical Informatics where I ask my students, what can you bring with your skills and your knowledge from medical informatics to greenify healthcare? This is where I am now, the Freie Universiteit Amsterdam. Sustainability is part of the profile of this um, um, university. I work at the Athena Institute, where I lecture. Uh, I, I de developed, uh, designed a new uh, special specialization in the health and life sciences called uh, Sustainable Health. In healthcare. I'm also affiliated with Scientist Rebellion, you probably know. This is our motto, the privilege to know the duty to act. 
because dear people sometimes it is very tiring and frust frustrating to publish on sustainable healthcare and nothing happens because the political will is very often failing and many beautiful words are spoken but not much happening with regard to sustainability okay um yeah well leading up to today was an action in 2019 in Cape Town in South Africa at the uh, Isqua Institute um, where my friend and then CEO Peter Lachman um, gave a lecture on um, sustainable healthcare. I seduced the board of Isqua to um, uh, uh, accept uh, a, a, a statement on sustainability because I thought the time was right to do so and I thought the time was right to frame sustainable healthcare as a quality trajectory um, uh, as, as a quality improvement trajectory well that is what happened and after that COVID came to the world and well the subject of climate change and, and, and healthcare quality remained inside the organization of ISQA. Um, and in the last great international meeting in Australia, many sessions were devoted to this subject. Yeah, what, well, what has happened? We have made a, a tremendous public health gains by uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the human in the human health, healthcare enterprise. Wait, I have to change this. Uh, by traditional measures of, 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 of literacy, of, of child mortality, of, of poverty, of life expectancy. This is a, 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 a great step forward, but at the same time, we have disrupted the natural systems on which all life on earth depends, also human life. Not only that, all these human-made anthropogenic environmental changes go further than just warming. It's also about biodiversity loss. It's about pollution of the soil, of the water, of the air, um, the uh, uh, security of, of national resources such as freshwater. Many changes are taking place. We are, for some people, living in the Anthropocene, with the age of man, caused by changes in demography, in consumption, in, in, in technology, the signature of man uh, on the planet, on the surface on the planet, below the surface of, on the planet, and above the surface of the planet, has changed the planet for good. Since the 1950s, we speak of the Great Acceleration, we see all kinds of production and consumption indicators rise and rise and rise exponentially almost. The use of water, transportation, production of clothes, production of transport, using of pesticides, energy use, they skyrocket since those days. Also the population is rising and also the GDP is rising as compared to the uh, last century in a very, very steep way, almost exponentially. At the same time, we see all these yeah, environmental indicators uh, go up and they correspond with that, the biodegradation, the emission of um, greenhouse gases, the loss of tropical forests, acidification, desertification, uh, fish capture. And yeah, uh, this guy called Rockström, he's a Swedish uh, climate scientist, he described these changes these climate uh, uh, changes on on the on the surface of the earth as the boundaries that are being crossed the planet of the earth is uh, capable of accepting all kinds of impact of absorbing all kinds of impact but there are limits to it and the limits they lie in for instance climate change which you can see here uh, the, the the integrity of the biosphere uh, the the cycles the bio bio geochemical cycles we have on the earth think think of carbon dioxide cycles but also the use of land and other um, yeah uh, in, investigated boundaries are being crossed at the moment which cause a yeah um, uh, cause a threat to actually population health and also to the human enterprise to to our civil 
uh, uh, civilization, basically. And for instance, climate change um, is it, about the, the, the warming of the earth uh, due to the burning of, of coal and oil and gas, and fossil fuels, causing um, the yeah, atmospheric depletion of carbon dioxide, which blocks uh, the cooling of the earth. The, 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 the sun is warming the earth, the earth needs to cool, but, it, uh, but the radiation from the earth is blocked by uh, carbon dioxide and other, and other um, F gases, for instance, other greenhouse gases, especially since these last few seconds in human existence, this has exponentially risen. And also the sea levels rise as a consequence of that, and we see more extreme weather. Uh, we see the retreat of glaciers with the concentration of greenhouse gases growing in the atmosphere and this worries us a lot. This is all uh, examined by an incredible scientific enterprise uh, led by the UN, the uh, in uh, Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. They publish reports on uh, the state uh, of the planet and they did so last year which caused a lot of, yeah, uh, 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 worries in, 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 in the world, because our usual, the conventional message messages had to be revised. As you can see on this slide, at the current rate, we would reach one and a half degrees Celsius between not 30 in 2052, but already in the 20s and 40s. Um, almost all scientists I know, I know speak of transformations or transitions that are necessary to counter these anthropogenic changes because we have mortgaged the health of the future generation to realize gains in the present. And this is a statement by the scientific foundation that introduced the concept of planetary health to the medical sciences. Yeah, it's not just our, our climate, I just said, We've lost our many forests, biodiversity is rapidly disappearing. I mean, brings tears to my eyes if you read this. Our oceans have become more acid. Land is decertifying. Um, yeah. 60% of our rivers are dammed. And yeah, also your country know that these extreme weather events wreak havoc. On our the, okay, these changes in our uh, environment also affect population and individual health and even threaten to jeopardize a hundred years of public health gains in our countries. Global warming, you can see, correspond, corresponds with carbon dioxide emission, which you can see on the Y-X. This is the rise in temperature. In the Netherlands, we already have 2.1 degrees in 2020. We have reached that. But being a high resource country, we can, um, well, we can afford to take measures to, uh, to counter the, the uh, hardest effects. And for every country, this is different. Global warming, what does it mean for your country, India? Um, well, I'm sure you have written, uh, you've read, you've read about this. There will be uh, an increase in heat waves and also uh, the frequency and, and, and the length of, of heat waves will uh, increase. So the chances for forest fires increase. There will be more rainfall in the southern parts of India, and rain could also increase in the southwest compared to earlier levels. And monsoon precipitation is projected to go up in the mid to long-term over South Asia. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure you have read these worrisome uh, conclusions of the IPCC report. Um, yeah, this is something about your country, uh, also belonging to one of the largest sea uh, carbon dioxide uh, emitters. Not yet India um, joined the, uh, th those nations who intends to achieve a net zero emission by 2050 because the government fears it would jeopardize the efforts to uh, combat poverty. But without India, the UN uh, see, uh, thinks uh, the global 
net zero uh, objective will not be uh, achieved. And in your country, it, uh, is a lot of action going on to think about what the next step would be. You probably know these people. Well, in short, our planet is in crisis. Humanity is in crisis because of these because of the ill planetary health and science must help. Um, yeah, a new concept of science called planetary health uh, was introduced a few years ago. It's ca characterized by a transdisciplinary solution-based um, uh, and also uh, a paradigm. And also actually it, 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 it represents for me a social movement. It is, um, yeah, it, it, it holds a, a focus on, on human health, but, but blurs all these disciplinary boundaries. I mean, I think we need all kind of coalitions, all transformative coalitions to combat the enormous challenge posed by climate change. Um, yeah, it, the, 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 the perspective, of course, is that harming our natural systems uh, harms ourselves and future generations and we have to revise actually our relationship with nature we are not at the top of the hierarchy or the top of the ladder of the evolution but we are part of nature as as as, as you as doctors i mean we know that it's not just in science but it's also on the streets where worry is growing. We remember the strikes of pupils. My own children uh, participated with my support in these strikes. Even doctors, um, at least in my country, other European countries, I, I think also in your country, um, have come together and, and stepped out on the street to protest and to ask for more urgency for this problem, more political urgency for this problem. And for this great transition, we have to do almost everything in a different way than we used to do. The production of food, our food system, our healthcare system, our lives, and our urban lives, uh, how, how we deal with our natural environment and resources. And the stories we tell ourselves about our place in the world, our relationship to nature, and what it actually means to live a good life. Um, yeah, it will be it will be requiring both innovation, improvement across all domains of society, and collaboration across all orders of society. Healthcare and health sciences, of course, is the subject of today, but it will take all of us to come out of our silos and not to compete, but to collaborate, to develop common terms and objectives and visions for the future with regard to uh, planetary health. I myself was, was growing more and more worried in, well, the 2017, I read these kind of reports of the Lancet countdown and the titles became more and more ominous. I was working at the National Healthcare Institute and I was really amazed that my uh, uh, my colleagues did, did not seem to notice these reports, which were delivered by uh, uh, a collaboration on all continents of the world, uh, multidisciplinary economists, uh, people from medicine, um, a psychologist, ecologist, and they started to, um, to examine the effects on population health of health and climate change and the reports were getting worse and worse code red for a healthy future and now the latest report says we are at the mercy of fossil fuels these health effects have been um, sustained by um, scientific evidence if you, you you look from within going going out of this circle you see that in here, the rising temperatures, extreme weather events, think of flooding or, or bushfires, um, but also sea, high, higher sea level, they can result in, in several threats to health within this green circle. For instance, um, uh, for instance, air pollution and allergens. 
can lead to more uh, prevalence of asthma and heart disease. We already see that in my country, but I, as I said before, uh, the, the effects differ uh, by the latitude of where you live on the, on the surface of the earth. That's easy to understand that, I mean, heat and heat waves and wildfires, they form a threat to, to health because they lead to heat stress and heart failure. Like social instability poses a threat to health because it may lead to violence, poverty and integration. So all kinds of ill physical health outcomes may result from the impact um, uh, of planetary health. Also mental health uh, uh, results have been examined, you know, panic and depression, even suicide and, and trauma and anxiety um, uh, have, have been, you know, noted in, in, in scientific um, literature. And of course, uh, pop population health is a, is a um, is a condition for, for prosperity, for happiness in, for the community. So it is the threat of, of health, it means a threat of our very civilization. Um, yeah, to go a little bit more in detail shortly, uh, recently a, a, a publication showed that um, in the, the chances for infectious diseases uh, to be aggravated by, uh, by climate change are very high. I think about 60% of, of, of the zoonotic, mostly animal to, to uh, human uh, diseases are aggravated by, uh, by global warming. So the transition to sustainability will, must be our answer, my societal answer, because I mean, I don't worry about the planet so much. The planet will live on for hundreds and millions of years. It is more that a climate collapse may result in a societal collapse. And that is something we must work to prevent. We can do so by reducing the ecological footprint of care. Because we too, in healthcare, uh, we contribute to pollution and to emissions. Um, like uh, compared our countries, um, my country is a major em em emission when you, uh, when you do the calculation per capita, India is one of the uh, uh, bigger e e emitters of, of, of greenhouse gases. Also in, in healthcare, as you can see, this is the total here. This is the, this is the healthcare uh, uh, contribution. And yeah, our, our, both our countries belong to, 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 to serious emitters of greenhouse gas. And we, in, in that sense, I mean, it's strange to say, but we, we produce illness in this way. You know, these are, you know, the way our, our institutions uh, produce these emissions. They have direct emissions because of our buildings, of our transport, our productions, indirect emissions um, and super indirect emissions in scope three. It's a way to calculate and compare uh, emissions by sector. So what is actually happening, it's a kind of bi-directional uh, thing. Climate change uh, affects health. And at the same time, you know, this, it, 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 it means an increasing uh, uh, demand for healthcare while healthcare um, uh, contributes to climate change in a kind of vicious circle. Yeah, in the Netherlands, doctors uh, swear an oath of Hippocrates. We say, first thing you do is not to harm. This is why one of the biggest uh, global uh, 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 green care organizations and NGO is called Healthcare Without Harm. Hi. Uh, my question is uh, uh, regarding the emissions or the uh, you know, the emissions from healthcare. So, in uh, in your opinion, what do you think the most uh, uh, in healthcare itself, which is the most uh, uh, increasing, which is the one that is, that is the uh, leading cause for uh, emission in healthcare operation? I have visited your, your great country a few times, but I don't know the healthcare system good enough to assess that actually. But um, in, in, in hospitals, it is, uh, you know, we are speaking in, in, in 
in, in the movement um, a lot about carbon dioxide emission because that is something we can measure and something we can do about it. You know, biodiversity loss is at least as important for the planetary health as greenhouse gas emissions, but we can, it, it, it is often not rocket science, I, I, I tell doctors and nurses to, to change that. It's a, a, a different attitude or a different process or that often redesigns healthcare in a, a, a green way. But I think in, in the Netherlands, uh, 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 fuel, fossil uh, uh, energy, electricity used for the treatment of air, purifying air, heating or cooling is for hospitals a, 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 a big uh, component and a big cost component also. And especially uh, operating rooms and intensive care, evidently, uh, 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 pr produce a lot of emissions. One simple way in the Netherlands to reduce F gases in use in, in, in anesthesiology is to replace um, these inhalers, which are done orally, by, by blood bags and, and intravenous, intravenous uh, uh, narcosis, which is in almost 100% as safe and as effective and as useful as other techniques. Of course, there are anesthesiologists who say, well, not for my patients. I have learned the other way. I will never change this. Of course, there is, but it is possible and it is, um, it is doable and there's evidence for it. So, I mean, yeah, of course, greenifying healthcare cannot be done at the cost of the safety of patients. So we have to, in, in our implementation, also speak with patients. And I find, and I find, and I see more observations in scientific, scientific literature, that patients are actually open to speak about that. If they can help to, you know, um, to reduce some, some, you know, emissions or work against the change of climate by choosing another medication, you know, we doctors, we think ah, our patients will never, they don't like to change the medication. And, and I don't like to change it either. <laughs> but it is when it's, uh, when there's evidence for doing so, it, it is possible. And more and more patients actually, patients are also citizens who are worried about the climate. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, Thank you. So we could go quickly to another question before we close. Yes, I, I read about in, in some reactions about uh, quality standards. That's, that is of course a, a very important quality instrument we have in, in quality improvement. And um, yeah, in the Netherlands, uh, health, the healthcare professionals themselves de decide what the healthcare standards describe. They describe what is good care eh, according to science, according to our tradition and our practice. I hope to encourage professionals to include in these standards um, new information um, on the effects of climate change of their interventions, be that medication, be it surgery, everything um, we do and may be done in another way should be, you know, should should be included, comprised in 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 in, in healthcare standards, which which give a direction to us uh, how to act. That's the royal way. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Hans. And I feel you have given us another way forward. Uh, at CAHO, we have a student research mentoring program where we have opportunity given to the students who are being mentored by professionals. And in that, sustainability is a big topic. We've done a good amount of study last year on the awareness in the healthcare professionals. And this right. year, we have plans to go into the hospital. So I welcome the hospitals over here to give opportunity to the students to do more research in sustainability. So deeper research, and we'll get in touch with you to, more, to take more guidance from you, Dr. Hans. I'd be really happy to do so. I'm, I'm, I'm so full of admiration of 
all you people I can see uh, in, 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 in the multiple spaces. And I thank you very much for your attention and I admire your admiration to quality improvement. I love you, bye. Thank you so much for your valuable time and for the core sharing that you've done with us, your experience. I'm very happy to have done so. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good uh, have a good evening. Hope to see Thank you again. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sustainability. Usually, um, we speak about mitigation, uh, re reducing the causes of of um, of of our emissions, of of pollutions, and adaptation. Um, seeking ways to adapt to the consequences of, of climate change and pollution. So this is, these are terms which are uh, useful to, 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 to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, our, our redesigning healthcare is not exactly an easy thing. In planetary health, we speak of a, a kind of consequence um, made of awareness, knowledge, and implementation. Of course, awareness is the, the first thing. Uh, our doctors and nurses uh, need to have some uh, basic awareness of what is actually going on in terms of planetary health and what their institution, what their sector uh, is contributing uh, to this. And yeah, is a transition is not just an improvement or an innovation and transition means that all stakeholders involved are taking part in this transition. So it means that, yeah, the whole healthcare system as we know it uh, needs to adapt to demands um, that come from the harmony of the environment. We need to adapt our supply chain, our transportation means, uh, our financial mechanisms, uh, our healthcare delivery systems, we need to rethink of that. And yeah, we sometimes call ourselves a healthcare industry. It doesn't sound so nice, but in a way, we're also a company. If you zoom out, uh, we have supplies, we have buildings, we have staff, we, we produce, we, 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 we use food, we produce waste, we buy things. Um, so in a way you can zoom out and see these in these business operations, a lot can be won in terms of um, uh, uh, less waste, for instance. In the Netherlands there's an incredible waste culture. Um, it came of course from basically from infection prevention. Um, so it came from a good heart, but but maybe we are so risk aversive in, in my country that we can do with less plastics and, and less uh, waste. A more circular process in processes in which we try to reduce um, or reuse our waste. Resilience is another term apart from mitigation and adaptation. I like the term actually because um, it is about the impact. We can prepare, we can, we can strengthen our resilience. Resilience refers to the capacity um, for your key functions in healthcare uh, to grow back into these functions and maybe improve. So we have to prepare for these health impacts, extreme weather events, depending on where exactly you, you live. Um, and we also have to develop a population, a public health um, a, a approach over a biomedical approach, because in public health, uh, our efforts are direct towards prevention. And all care that is not consumed, or it's all care that is not produced, may not be green in itself, but it contributes to reducing um, the footprint, the ecological footprint of healthcare. So we must try to get our own house in order in terms of climate neutrality, at least the smallest footprint possible. And we must prepare for the impact 
on components of our health system. I like to borrow these components from the WHO, who have um, uh, developed a kind of operational framework for building climate resilient healthcare systems. And these are the blocks of these healthcare systems. I'm sure you know them. And one could look through a green glass, so to say, to any of these building blocks, to the service delivery, to the health workforce, to use of medication and technology, also to the leadership and the governance of the organization, to the budgetary parts and the health information system. What can we do to greenify these parts and to make our uh, healthcare system resilient, climate resilient? Um, yeah, one thing is, which I, I really would like to un underline for you is, is there's actually no need to reinvent the green wheel. We don't need to, um, to, to invent totally new ap approaches to, uh, uh, to build this resilience. Of course, we need a, a, a transition, a societal transition, but in healthcare, we have already many instruments that we use, for instance, for quality improvement, it can also be used for more sustainability in healthcare because green healthcare is better healthcare and a green sustainable trajectory may be viewed as a quality improvement trajectory. Nevertheless, uh, the WHO framework is there to use and to, um, they, they see these um, four uh, a, a components of, of healthcare systems as the most actionable parts of the system to act upon. And not, it's, it's the workforce to have yeah, adequate numbers of skilled human resources to, I mean, uh, also to prevent burnout and, and to have autonomous nurses and, uh, and, and doctors working in, 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 in a healthy, uh, atmosphere with each other. It's, it is as important as hygienic or sanitation or, or uh, healthcare uh, or, or waste reduction uh, and management efforts. And also, of course, it's evident energy and infrastructure. <coughs> it is, yeah, evident that we must act upon um, those components to reduce their ecological impact. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, it, it, it looks a bit complicated, but it's actually interesting because what you see here on, on, on the right side, I hope you can see it, are, are, are several outcomes of, of, a, of a shock. This is where the shock is. Um, and this is where the system is not resilient at all. It may follow these lines and collapse. It may also follow this line and recover, but not as good as before. It may also, you know, um, end up in recovering better than before or even transformation this is resilience is a is a term which is applicable for systems but also for for um, for persons for systems you could think of um, of a village at, at, the, at the coastline which is flooded and it, it it after a few years when it is resilient in terms of you know, are they, did they take enough prevention measures or not? Were they prepared or not? This would define their response, of course, and this, this would, would define uh, the, their res resilience level. And some villages may even recover better than before after a few years. This is the same time for, for, for people, for individual people, but also for healthcare systems. What can you do to prepare, to prepare um, uh, for risk um, uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to, uh, to achieve uh, better outcomes in ter terms of, of resilience. This is an important question. It, maybe it goes further than just adapting or, or mitigating, which is hard enough in itself. Yeah, um, healthy people and a healthy environment that goes for our working force as well. And this is what you see here, the climate resilience. And this, these are the facilities of, of, of uh, the system. These are the impacts of climate change. And here you can see the environmental impacts. Yeah, if you, if you put it in, in, in a scheme like this, you know, it looks a bit like 
BDSEA circles, you probably know this, plan, do, study, act. But it's, it starts, of course, with awareness and commitment and engagement in the line, in, in, in the hierarchy. Um, uh, that, that's where it starts. Then we need to build, build knowledge and to start change process, with, which may also be you know, that they, they converge with other quality improvement trajectories. And finally, you hope that these outcomes will make a better resilient uh, uh, healthcare facility. Um, an another uh, instrument which is already there is a, is a, a global roadmap for decarbonization by the uh, Healthcare Without Harm uh, community. They give all kinds of uh, practical tips. I will not go along them uh, now, but it's just to, to focus your attention on, on this important source. And, you know, that, that shows that you don't have to invent uh, a green wheel yourself. You can make use of these kinds of instruments. Also, the quality improvement tools and concepts and technologies delivered, among others, by, by the International Society for Quality in Health, by ISCO. And probably also by CAHO. Th these kind of, yeah, smaller, the, the, these, are, these first four are concepts which can be used at the, at, the, at the working floor level, but at the institution level or even higher, we can use, make use of evidence-based based medicine, which we use, of course, for quality improvement. We use co-production techniques to go with patients together uh, and with the environment. We use accreditation standards, which may be greenified as well. And also, I've been working myself on health technology uh, uh, assessment to also to include um, environmental indicators in the assessment of health technology or medicines. Yeah. Uh, a, a fourth instrument, which is quite easy to use, is what we call the R leather. Um, it is a way of working more uh, circular, as we call it, circular regards the reduction of unnecessary, unavoidable waste. The first thing is that we can refuse the use and rethink why are we actually doing the things we are doing? Where did this come from? Reducing the use is the second thing of reusing the material and not throwing it away. Repairing it, refurbishing it, remanufacturing it, give it a new owner, a new purpose is a fourth step on this ladder. And finally, recycling and, and recovering. Well, you can work it out for medical devices, for materials, uh, for processes. It's actually very interesting to think in this way and promote circularity. And um, yeah, this is uh, one of the first institutes in, in, in the world has been the uh, uh, Sustainable uh, uh, Healthcare Institute in, uh, in England. And they developed um, um, these kind of uh, tools, especially with regard to greenifying health. Of course, we knew prevention and patient empowerment, but yeah, they, they tune it towards the net zero uh, agenda. And yeah, and they involve all parts of the healthcare system in it. And they view sustainability as, as a dimension of quality in a way. Of course, good care is safe, is timely, is equitable, is effective, is efficient, is respectful to patients but also good care, care, care of good quality is sustainable care. And also this is yeah, adopted by the Institute of Medicine, the Royal College of Physicians. Yeah, high value care has been addressed in, in the literature and um, yeah, Francis Mortimer in, 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 in England developed the concept of sustainable value. You see here the triple bottom line these are the costs and these are the outcomes. We have to include not only the, the budgetary cost and the social cost in terms of burnout, but also in terms of working pleasure, but we have to also include um, uh, the environmental costs. They have to be as small as possible because if the bottom line is small, 
the sustainable value is big and the outcome for patients and population is big. That is what value is. I will come show you some um, um, examples from my country. Uh, well, to give some inspiration, probably, and to show you that not everything has to be reinvented by yourself. You can be inspired by many examples all over the world, not especially from my country, by the way. But anything actually to responsibly reduce consumption and production of care, I, I said it before, actually, it's not exactly green, but may reduce the um, ecological footprint of, of the healthcare industry. Inappropriate care, you know, over treatment, over diagnosis, unnecessary care. It is not only unethical, actually, it is also yeah, in, in, in increasing the footprint. So when we can avoid that, uh, we contribute to a more green um, healthcare, which also goes for, for more self-care and, and pre-care, lifestyle medicine, prevention and education, prehabilitation. Do you know that term? Um, we we what we try to do is to um, if, if people need surgery. We try to improve the, the condition before the operation of the patient. We do uh, physical and mental exercises to improve the overall mental and physical uh, condition of the, patient, of the patient so that after the operation, after surgery, the chances for success are um, uh, evidently uh, uh, better. Yeah, this is very Dutch. Uh, maybe some of you have to laugh. A bicycle uh, delivering a chemotherapy to people, which, which takes less time, is less strenuous because it's in the domestic environment and causes less emission. It was actually a very successful pilot, which was done at, uh, at, a, at a small hospital in, uh, in, in Amsterdam. Also, uh, not so long ago, about 16 surgical medical associations of the, the, the cutting professions, we call them, uh, they got together and, and um, formed a network and said, well, now we really have to reduce the waste. You know, these people are doers. They wanted to reduce waste and plastics and F-cases used in anesthesiology, the most circular use of, of, of instruments and, and energy use. And they even developed a guideline to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to implement uh, sustainable uh, operation rules in the Netherlands. Actually, a success story of this. Now, this is uh, GP practices in the Netherlands are often yeah, small companies with, with, for people working there. And there are all kinds of guidelines for climate responsible entrepreneurship. And they developed an ebook for GPs. Uh, how to deal with my building, how, with the, how to deal with my interior, uh, with uh, ICT, with consulting, can I do it um, more sustainable? Or where are the chances for that? Of course, digital solutions may help. But, uh, evidently, uh, data centers use a lot of energy, but uh, in the Netherlands, many patients come by car to the hospital. Many professionals also come by car to hospital. And a lot of benefit, green benefit, can be one by um, yeah more public transport or not even visiting the hospital if that is possible but doing consult uh, at a distance uh, supported by by medical technologies uh, yeah this is a research of myself in respiratory care we have been analyzing data and and asking ourselves the questions can we uh, replace these meter dose inhalers who that contain uh, propellant gases with non-propellant propellant inhalers uh, that are used by COPD and asthma patients in the Netherlands. And we found out that about over 60 million kilos of, of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions, equivalent to about 8,004 Dutch households, uh, we could save that and also almost 50 million euros cost reduction. And this is probably an interesting tipping point that green solutions may be in many cases also better solutions, but also 
um, uh, financially better solutions. Sometimes we have to think it more in the short term for that. We have to leave short termism, but think in the long term. That means that our monetary uh, investments will pay out in population health later than just four years or six years. Also in terms of prevention, there is some evidence for all these concepts that are used here. The, the presence of animals, a, a pleasant interior, um, sound, light and air may all uh, in, 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 uh, influence your mental and physical well-being and health or even prevent uh, uh, get, getting sick or sicker. Even um, the, 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 the vicinity of nature uh, may have this preventive uh, effect. And of course, healthy food and nutrition is very important uh, for that. And here I have come within time, I, 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 I hope, at, at the end of uh, uh, my lecture, but I'm totally open to take some questions and I will stop sharing this screen to see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hans. Uh, it was a very uh, educative presentation with a lot of statistical data, and you brought the centuries out of ecological performance down here with the impact and the role that all of us as different countries, we have to come together. You have very impressively with a lot of examples uh, shown us and also the research data that you presented. The most impressive for me was definitely uh, the <clears throat> study on, on the ecological footprint where the healthcare is standing, as far as our country is concerned, we're standing third on, and we need to urgently think about decarbonization methods. And also uh, the commitment of 2050, uh, you highlighted that our attempt has been towards 2070. Even though it has been said as 2070, but there are a lot of efforts that's happening around renewable energy. RE100 programs are taken up by a lot of manufacturing facilities and hospitals, uh, it's a great opportunity for them to explore too. And so there are also a lot of measures that's happening around the reporting on sustainability. So voluntarily, there is a country guideline on the BRSR report. So initiatives have started. There is a lot of awareness that is happening. And- uh, Thanks to you. Yeah, <laughs> there's a great way forward. And, and uh, this presentation has been a great insight uh, to, to, to see how we have opportunities at a country level, at a hospital level to take. And this presentation has put in a lot of, uh, you know, insight in the participants. There are a few questions. I would definitely want to take them to you.